Hi there, I'm glad you're back. Remember, we're working in QuickBooks 2018, and we're down in Module 2 now, which is the Getting Started module. This is Section 2, and I want to talk to you a little bit about setting up your company file and some options you have before you actually launch into what we call the Easy Step interview that we'll go through in Section 3. Let me flip over to QuickBooks, and I will show you what those options are. When you first open QuickBooks, you're going to see the screen where it says No Company Open. If you had previously opened a company file, you would see it in this list, and you could just double click to open it up. If you don't see one that you know you have set up in this list, there is an open option over here where you can just go through and find that file in your computer. This edit list will also let you take items off of this list that you may not want to see. For example, what if it's a company file that you don't use anymore and you just don't want to see it in the list every time you open this window? You can edit the list and remove it. Here's where you create a new company file, which is obviously what we have to do here in just a moment. But I did want to point out these other two options. Here's another way to open a file that you know is here and maybe it's not in this list. And you'll notice there's an option here that says restore an existing company. Later on, we'll be talking about how to actually create backup files of your QuickBooks desktop company file. And if you have one of those, you may need to use it from time to time. And this is a quick way to actually restore that file. You won't be able just to open it up. You'll have to go through this restore process. Also, notice that you can open a sample file over here on the right. You'll notice there's a drop down arrow which will give you several choices of different sample files to look at. If you don't know how to do something, go and see how they did it in one of these sample files. They're all set up the way they should be. This first one is a product based business. It's actually a construction type company that we'll be using later in our exercises. But they hold inventory and invoicing and all kinds of things like that. And then there's a service based business, which I think is Larry's Landscaping. And that's more like a set of a service where you don't really have inventory. So go and check those out when you get time. And again, remember those are set up exactly the way you want your company file to be set up. What we're going to do is create a new company. So you're going to start by clicking right here and it's going to take you to a window here that actually says let's set up your business. It does give you an option to use the start setup right here which is very generic and you'll also see these other options down here at the bottom. I just want to point out what these other options are. You might have an existing QuickBooks file that you want to go ahead and open. Here's another way to open it right here. You might have some data in Quicken that you want to bring over or some other accounting software package. There's also an advanced setup option here. I always suggest that you use the advanced setup because it's going to give you more options to setting up your company file correctly the first time than using the start setup, but you could use either one. We're going to use the advanced setup and this is going to launch us into what we call the easy step interview. And that's what I want to get started with over in section three. Let's go ahead and flip over there and we'll get started using the easy step interview. All right, we're still in module two, which is the getting started module. And we're going to go ahead and launch into the easy step interview. This is part one. There are two parts to this particular section, so make sure that you watch each one and then go back through them if you need to, because this is really important. You need to properly set up your company file from the beginning. Let me go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and we'll start the Easy Step interview. This is your Easy Step interview, and the first thing it asks you to do is enter some information about your company. You can see that it wants to know your company name, and that's the only thing that's mandatory to put on this screen. Notice the little red asterisk to the left. Everything else here is optional if you want to put it in. I would advise you to set it up, though, because if you're going to send out correspondence to your customers or vendors, it's going to pull from the street address, the city, all of these fields, so you'll need that information in QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and plug in a company name. We're going to say this is ABC Supplies. And notice if I tab down that it brings down the same name as my legal name. So unless it's different, you don't need to change it. 
The tax ID, you can leave this blank if you'd like. The only reason QuickBooks needs this is if you decided to use the Intuit Payroll Service, it would need to know your company's tax ID number. You're going to see there are several fields in QuickBooks that are just informational, and if you don't need to fill those in, then I would leave some of that blank. The street address is going to be 145. We're going to say West Florence Avenue. And we're going to say this is in Los Angeles, California. And we'll say the zip is 90001. And then you can see you can put in your phone, your fax, your email, and your website. I'm going to click next at the bottom and go to the next screen where it says select your industry. There are many different types of industries in this list. You can see there's accounting, there's auto repair, there's actually engineering, there's information technology, legal services, if you're a nonprofit, pretty much every type of industry is represented in this list. If you don't see the type of industry you think your business is in, then go ahead and choose the general product or service based business from the bottom. There is no wrong answer here. Whatever you choose, QuickBooks is going to go ahead and take that information and create a generic chart of accounts for you based on all the options from here on out. I'm going to go ahead and pick a general service based business and I'm going to click next at the bottom. This screen asks how is your company organized? Do not get hung up on which option to choose. If you happen to be a business that does your own taxes then you will want to go ahead and pick one of these options. Now when I say your own taxes, what I mean is if you're using TurboTax or some other software program, then it would need to know where to pull the different items in QuickBooks onto your tax form and that would be based on how your company is organized. However, if you have an accountant, then go ahead and pick other or none. And the reason I tell people to do this is because what's going to happen if you pick one of these other options you're going to be on some screen in QuickBooks and it's going to ask you which line on your tax form would you like to pull this onto and you're not going to have a clue because you're not an accountant. Now if you are an accountant obviously you would choose one of these but for most of us we're going to pick other or none at the bottom. Here we're selecting the first month of our fiscal year. It defaults to January so unless you need to change that you can just click next and then it says set up your administrator password. I do want to spend a minute on this because this is very important. QuickBooks allows you to set up users. What that means is that you have the ability when you open a QuickBooks file to have the user put in their username and password in order to gain access to the data file. QuickBooks allows you to have up to five users whoever sets up the company file is the administrator. They have rights to everything. This is asking you to set up the administrator's password. This is not mandatory but it's highly 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 suggested and I do agree with that. We're going to talk about users in a later module so for now I'm going to leave it blank but in real life I'd probably go ahead and set something up here. If you don't you can always go and change it. Here we're going to go ahead and click next and create our company file and this is kind of like the save screen. You can choose to put this anywhere you like. Notice your file name is your company name so again unless you want to change that to something else then you just leave it and click save over on the right. What's happening right now is it's saving all of the information that you've told it and it's actually setting up the QuickBooks desktop screen for you. So what you're going to notice is that you're going to see on the left your icons appearing over in this icon bar here. You're actually going to see at the top of your screen the company name. You can actually leave the Easy Step interview at this point if you'd like. You can see a leave button. But I would suggest that you go ahead and finish the interview. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. These are going to be customization type options. So let's go ahead and click Next. And it asks, what do you sell? You can choose services, products, or both. There's no wrong answer again. If you decide you sell services this time and later you want to add products, you can always, always, always change this information. If you happen to be setting up your own company file while you're watching this video and your screen is different than mine, remember it's based on how you answer the previous questions. So sometimes it will skip a screen if it doesn't think you need those options.
I'm going to go ahead and choose both in this case and click Next. And now it's asking me, do I charge sales tax? We're just turning the option on, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Do you want to create estimates in QuickBooks? Construction is a prime example because they estimate jobs. If I want to have my kitchen remodeled, I'm going to ask the contractor for a quote or an estimate. I'm going to go ahead and choose yes here and click next. This screen asks about using statements in QuickBooks. Some businesses will send statements to their customers at the end of the month. A statement basically is a summary of everything that happened with that customer's account during the month. You don't have to send these out, but if you'd like to, they're a really great way to send a friendly reminder to your customer that they owe you money. Using progress invoicing. This screen actually goes right along with the estimate option because you have the ability in QuickBooks to actually invoice your customer for a portion of your estimate. That's called progress invoicing. It will let you keep invoicing until you've used everything from the estimate. Typically, if you estimate jobs, you will want to use progress invoicing. Managing bills that you owe. Bills come in the mail that you have to pay. A lot of people will actually get their bill out of the mailbox and they'll put it on the basket on their desk and when Friday comes, they'll just sort through and decide which ones they're going to pay. That's certainly going to be okay in QuickBooks, but what you're not going to be able to do if you use it that way is to run reports and see who you owe, how old those bills are that you owe, if they're in the 60 to 90 day category, etc. So it's a good idea to go ahead and put all of your bills in QuickBooks as soon as you get them in the mail or as soon as they're emailed to you. I would say yes to this option and track the bills that you owe. Next it asks us about tracking inventory in QuickBooks. True inventory means that you sell physical items. If I have 10 of something and then I sell 8 and I have 2 left, QuickBooks can pop up and remind me to order some more. That's called true inventory. Another term you're going to hear in QuickBooks is called non-inventory. It might be that I do want to track the different items that I sell, but maybe don't keep any in the back room. It could be I order them one at a time as a customer requests them. Sometimes you actually purchase inventory and non-inventory items as well. So if you want to turn this on, you would say yes. And by the way, if you use purchase orders in your business, you have to use the yes option here to see the purchase order option. The next thing it asks me about is tracking time in QuickBooks. If you have a service type business where you invoice customers for the time you spent either speaking to them on the phone or meeting with them throughout the month, this is a great feature to use because it will allow you to put those individual meetings in there and then pull an invoice based on that. If you're in a business where you do job costing, the time that you or your employees or even subcontractors spend working on a particular project or job, that's part of your job costing. So again, you would want to turn this feature on. This next option says, do you have employees? Now this is going to turn an icon on on the screen so that in the future, if you'd like to use the Intuit payroll option, you can do that. This is a little misleading right here because it says we have W-2 employees and we have 1099 contractors. 1099 contractors have nothing to do with payroll, absolutely nothing. They're treated as vendors in QuickBooks. We will discuss as we move down in these videos how you set up your contractors. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and continue talking about how to use that easy step interview. This is going to be module two and we're in section three, part two. We're on the screen that asks about using accounts in QuickBooks. What's getting ready to happen is when I click next at the bottom, it's going to ask me first to select a date to start tracking my finances. If you purchase QuickBooks towards the end of the year, let's say October for example, it's up to you if you want to go back to the beginning of January or the beginning of your fiscal year and enter all the transactions that occurred. That could be a lot of work for you, but remember that the reports are only as accurate as the data that you have in QuickBooks. Your other option is to start with today's date or pick a date you'd like to start with. If you were starting in October, I would say get out your September bank statement and its ending date, let's say it's September 30, 
then use October 1 as the beginning of your QuickBooks file. You can always enter something prior to that date, but it just has to have a date to start with. I'm going to pick the beginning of the fiscal year and go ahead and click Next. Here is where it asks you to review your income and expense accounts. Based on how you answered all of the questions in the Easy Step interview, it's created this generic set of accounts for you. You can look down this list, and if you decide that you use subcontracted services, for example, you can check it. If you decide there's something you don't need, then you can uncheck it. We are going to spend a little bit of time on this here shortly, so you might want to go ahead and leave it for now and just click Next at the bottom. And it's going to say, congratulations, you've completed the Easy Step interview. Now I'm going to click Go to Setup. You're about 85% finished at this particular point. There's still some things you need to set up, but you could start using it right now. These are some things that it suggests you go ahead and spend the time to set up. You will have to add the people you do business with. Those are your customers, products and services, and your bank accounts. We're just going to go ahead and use the X at the top of that window and close it out. And that's going to take us back to our QuickBooks desktop or home screen. They also have this new feature tour, and we've talked a little bit about the new features already. So if you don't want to see the tour, you can click the X and get out of it, and then you'll be on your home screen. That's pretty much going to wrap up how the Easy Step interview works. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start talking a little bit about what we call the My Company Overview. So I will see you shortly in Section 4. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. Click over there to get the complete seven hour course for QuickBooks 2018 and click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.